Okay, so uh, there's another relationship between the acidity and basicity or alkalinity of a solution, which is a number that we call Kw, which you can call the ion product for water or the water ionization constant or auto ionization constant. And it's a measure of how much of a glass of water is ionized when it's just sitting there with no other chemicals in it. And they call it the ion product because it's the product of how much acid is in the water in the form of hydrogen or hydronium and how much hydroxide is in the water. And at room temperature that product is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And that 10 to the minus 14 is related to the reason why a pH and a pOH always add up to 14. If the temperature changes, if water is hotter or colder, then you get more or less ionization and the Kw will change. But as far as I know, in this course, they always use the room temperature Kw, and that happens to be the nice one, 1 times 10 to the minus 14th. So if you have a problem where we tell you, say, the amount of hydroxide in a solution, we could have done this yesterday because from the hydroxide we could have found the pOH. 14 minus that number could have gotten us the pH and then we could have done 10 to the minus pH and that would give us the hydronium concentration. So this isn't really expanding our capabilities anymore but it's making this simpler to work out. Instead of having to do one, two, three steps, we can now do one step and crack this. So this is nice. Our formula says that the H3O, which we do not know, though we yearn to find it, multiplied by the hydroxide, which is 2.45 times 10 to the minus 4, equals the ion product for water, 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So if we want to solve this for H3O, we divide by the concentration of OH. So the H3O concentration Da, 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 is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 2.45 times 10 to the minus 4. And out come the calculators. 2.45 times 10 to the minus 4. By the way, if you aren't doing scientific notation correctly on your calculator, this might be where it burns you because the order of operations can easily get messed up if you're using some incorrect method of doing your scientific notation. So if you do not get 4.08 times 10 to the minus 11 out of this, then I'll bet you the trouble is your scientific notation technique with your calculator and I encourage you to talk to your teacher about that, tell them what kind of calculator you have, and they should be able to suggest how you could be doing that better. Anyway, 4.08 times 10 to the minus 11 is our concentration of hydronium. Um, quick, quick observation, this thing contains a lot more base than it does acid, therefore it is a basic solution. We could find the pH if we wanted, but that's all they really asked for here. Let's see, again they ask for hydronium concentration, and now the hydroxide is actually two and a half, so same formula. It's the same every time. The H3O, we don't know it, times the OH, they gave it to us, equals one times 10 to the minus 14. So one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by two and a half, four times 10 to the minus 15. Moles per liter. I meant to put units on this, sorry, moles per liter, is our concentration for H3O. And if they ask about hydroxide and give hydronium, nothing really changes. It's just the H3O is 3.65. That goes here. OH, don't know it. And the ion product is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 3.65. Notice the calculation is the same no matter which number they give us. 
either way that you use this formula, it ends up being 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the number you know equals the other one. So it's an easy formula to use. It's symmetric. 2.74 is what I get here times 10 to the minus 15. So high concentration for hydronium, very low concentration for hydroxide. The solution is acidic.